I'm Daniel Madison, this is The Expert, The Card Table, an introduction that I wrote, or wrote to The Expert, The Card Table, in, um, I think it was this year, yeah, 2018. I have never found it an easy challenge confronting, analyzing, or offering my understandings and studies on the work of S.W. Ernest. His book, The Expert, The Card Table, has permeated my work for my entire 20 year career in slight hand and the deceptive practices, specifically with playing cards. Due to the nature of my practices, it has been a very difficult, it has been very difficult to work without at times addressing, referring to, or directly citing the man himself and his book. I've always felt somewhat haunted by him. Many of his students are unable to withhold their protective opinions or criticisms of anybody who dares step into his shoes or confront his genius. For me, in the days before my working independence, my published offerings and tributes to Erdnays were most always weighed upon me by superiors. By the age of 15, I had become a well-versed charlatan, paying board, necessities and luxuries by devious and dangerous means. It would be a few minutes of Steve Forte on a grainy cable TV channel that would stop me in my tracks and change my life forever. I saw in his demonstrations of card table deceptions a mean to a far less dangerous end, or so I thought. I quit every line of income and cut ties with the people whom I once blamed for turning me, and I dedicated every single opportunity to the practice of sleight of hand. Back then, 1995, I had no idea that an entire industry awaited, nor publications that would openly teach such deceptive techniques with a deck of cards. For me, the hard way was the only way. Logic has always been my preferred teacher. I sat with the knowledge that a desired playing card could be controlled in a shuffled deck and then dealt deceptively from the bottom of the deck whilst appearing to be dealt fairly from the top. This is possible. It is a simple idea, yet developing a method at first was impossible, or at least it felt impossible. To skip a few years, my determination and persistence were the foundation of what I once referred to as my expertise. With no external comparisons and only the memory of Forte, I built my skills up to what I believed to be better than his in more ways than just the skill. I documented my three years of practices for the explaining and documenting how each deceptive technique work, worked backed up with endless analytics on the psychology, attitude and confidence needed to execute such deceptions at card games. I would eventually document my work into a single piece that I called the Card Cheat Hand Book. But my ambitions to one day publish and teach my works later in life would crash and burn faster than I could have ever arrogantly anticipated. Having successfully started a career as a card cheat, my confidence was high and also misplaced. I quickly felt unstoppable like a superhero. I had the secret skills to take wherever I wanted, but greed began to, to cloud my judgement. It was August 18th, 1998. I was 18 years old at a card game that would almost end my life. In many ways, metaphorically, it was the day that a younger me died and a new person was born. I took a careless and overconfident risk that would give my game away. My opponents did not take it easy on me. The paranoid six months that I would spend in a wheelchair and the year or so that followed were the most challenging of my life at the, at the moment of writing this or at the moment of the memory, I guess. The discovery of Ernays and the deceptive practices as an entire industry were enough for me to burn my notes on deception. I naively assumed that I had developed truly unique groundbreaking techniques. To find out not only the same but better techniques had already been published over 100 years before mine and that the practices were even older, that is somewhat poetically and appropriately heartbreaking and I still feel that heartbreak to this day. Ernest played a part of my existence in the deceptive practices for day one, from day one. 
Little did I know, and my brief appearances in the industry were always floored by his name and his book. Followed, how ironic, followed by his name and his book. I couldn't demonstrate my techniques without a mention from a spectator, and my claims to know very little about him or his book were dismissed as strategically cute. Aside from publishing, aside from publishing this very edition of this book, my own direct involvement with Ernay's projects have been at the hand of another, almost on every turn. We are of course fully responsible for our own doings and for me my time working for a corporation within the industry led to projects that I could not refuse. We all have bills to pay. My first offering was a simple borrowing of Ernay's Green, the second deck of playing cards in the Madison range at E were the Madison dealers. When designing the deck, I colour matched the green cover from the first edition copy of Expo at the card table and this became a selling point for the deck. The trailer, titled Green, included the book and the X in the and me executing card table slide of hand with the deck. This was a simple Odenay's acknowledgement. My first direct tribute would follow shortly after. Following the Madison Hustlers debacle, <laughs> I can't even say the word that I write. The, following the Madison Hustlers shambles, I decided to hold off for a while from printing my own logo on any more decks. This allowed me to introduce Madison Presents, a series of playing cards that I designed that would be Madison branded. Following the Lion's Den deck, a deck designed for my underground casino, I published the SWE deck. A deck that simply used the cover of the first edition book as the back design for the deck. Despite the heavily customized core cards, the deck was very well received and so a further black and gold edition of the deck was produced. I felt unsettled about the deck, regretful about my choice to have used the legacy of Erdnays not to present the playing card industry with a sound offering, but to pay the bills and keep myself in work. I wish I hadn't started reading this. After, after a few years, the final straw had been pulled when I was approached with a major publication for 2016, Ernest by Madison. I agreed to make the project and I began to prepare, to prepare myself mentally for a complete change of direction in 2017. I started to see EXM as my final offering to the industry. I was so ashamed of the project that it took me two years to complete. I completed and scrapped the project three times in those two years before I settled on the final project. What was said to be the works of S.W. Ernest by Madison became to me at least Mechanic Volume 2. I was so unhappy with teaching another person's material that I completely changed the project to show simply my opinion on Ernest's book and how he and his work had influenced me over the years, which is very little, and in honesty, I have little good to say of him. As much as I despise the project, it gave me the perfect opportunity to publish a deck of cards I wanted to publish since seeing M.D. Smith's drawing of Ernest's hands holding what I always saw as the Erdnays deck. A back design all white with two black squiggles on it. Through the EXM project, through the EXM project, I was finally able to bring the deck to life. And that very deck is my proudest offering a tribute to the expert of the card table, S.W. Erdnays. With my opinion set aside, I offer you this Madisonist edition of the expert of the card table. With this introduction set aside, it is true to its original first edition form. Reformatted only to fit the size of these pages. I offer this book as an important foundation for those venturing into the world of card table deception with a deck of playing cards. Although I unfairly suggest superior modern lessons in my book, How to Cheat Your Cards, I implore all who delve to invest their time and efforts into the teachings of a legend. 
I will join you again at the end of this book for a few final words, but for now, I present The Expert the Card Table by S. W. Ernest. I did leave a few notes at the end of this book, um, and I think it was very simple. Um, let's go to the exit. An exit of all that I have understood and continue to learn about S. W. Ernest. I am mostly impressed and bewildered by the level of adoration, hype, and the purposefully created propaganda that has been attached to his name and his publication for the sole purposes, I believe, of capitalism. The minimalist design of the canvas green cover stamped with gold foil, even the acorn symbols and lack of description other than the title. The mystery of the author's quite obvious pseudonym, the precise, polished and articulate penmanship of a clever, well-educated man and his tales of cheating at cards. Even his preface, honesty and intentional mistakes throughout the book, people flock to these ideas like religious freaks and rightfully panic when his image is confronted. Did he intentionally create a god of himself, perhaps to mask his demons and the devil who lies beneath? I can say one thing simply because I share his ideal, his character, mystery and the strategy behind his offerings. It is they that hold the secrets of his actual plans. The devil is alive and well, make sure you do not play cards with him. Now the Madisonist edition of the book is gone, um, expert the card table everybody knows about it's still out there. The edition that I have made with meme dog uh, stay close pay attention you're gonna be able to get that copy very soon a few people already picked it up from me already a few people kicked up uh, picked it up from me already uh, but the actual published edition is coming soon uh, make sure you follow meme dog and follow our updates I'll be back very soon probably without anything to do with the expert card table I'm Daniel Morrison, thanks for listening.